Welcome back to another GB Studio tutorial. My name is Robert Doman and today we're going to be looking at tile switching and how it is one of the most powerful tools you can have as a game developer and looking at it through the lens of Take It Racing 3. But before we start, I want to remind you that I've put my game Take It Racing 2 onto a cartridge. You can also check out my last video where I talk about it a bit more in depth. I'm going to put on a small little sale leading up to Christmas, so definitely check it out if you haven't already. And if you don't remember what GB Studio is, it's a drag and drop game engine that lets you make Game Boy games that can be exported as ROMs that you can put on real cartridges, or you can uh, export them as web games. And the process of tile switching is the idea that we're going to take one of these 8x8 tiles and we're going to replace it with a new image. So one of these tiles can be replaced with a different image. So to begin, I'll show you what's possible by showing you what I've done in Take It Racing 3. So if you see here, we have a little cursor that moves around and by increasing this little counter here, we can increase the lap count, which also um, increases you know how many miles the, the race is. And then when you press select, it changes the select button to uh, dark green rather than black. Um, and I'm doing this not with sprites, but with background tile switching. And the reason why I want to do this is because it lets you change more of the scene without using sprites. So sprites can be quite uh, intensive and you have a limit. Uh, if we go on here, and actually this level counter here, where it says level and has the bar across here, that's also using tile switching. And the reason why I want to use tile switching for this case is because you're not allowed this many sprites in a row. Uh, if I was to do that, it would be it would start bugging out and you'd start seeing glitches and things going wrong because the Game Boy cannot physically, um, or with GB Studio, you cannot physically display that many sprites in a horizontal uh, row without things going wrong visually. And I just believe that's because the sprite layer is has less power than the uh, background layer. So with the background layer, we can just switch uh, things. So if I select this car and I then do the same with the engine, I'll just select this engine. And then if we purchase some tires and we select them and we can move forward and we can increase here. You see how all of these stats are changing. Uh, we've got the gearing uh, icon here and it's going up and down and we can then change our downforce and our acceleration depending on what speed we're at. And again, by using tile switching, it means we're not having to worry about uh, sprites with hundreds of frames. For example, if I wanted this 27 to be able to display from zero to 99, that's 99 different frames I need a sprite to have. Uh, however, with tile switching, all I have to do is reference um, a background and call upon zero to 99, which the background can have. Uh, and then it will just replace that tile with a tile that I've predetermined, right? Okay, so we've just accepted, and now we're going to go into our first race. Um, and obviously, again, this is tile switching, all of these numbers, uh, this power bar. And then if I go over to the pits, we have um, all of these uh, with uh, tile switching. And even the fuel gauge is tile switching, the temperature gauge. And even this car, this this car, I'll sh obviously, I'll show you, show you the scene in a minute. The car is a load of jumbled mess when you see it. And then I'm replacing that jumbled mess, those unique tiles, with this image. And the same with the engine so that uh, no matter what car and what engine we pick we have um, the correct ones displaying for us here and then you see as well we also have our times displayed correctly with these with this tile switching so the only two things we're actually using as sprites in the scene is this marker telling us that we're in first and this uh, arrow that we're using to move around the scenes so basically this game can run itself where all of the ai in the background is just driving and that they're you know increasing their time just like we're increasing ours I believe I've only set up two races, other cars, to be uh, racing uh, properly right now. So as you see, the person in fourth has 19 minutes while I've only got 45 seconds. And that's because I haven't set their uh, values correctly yet. And all I have to do is go in and uh, set those correctly. And then we will have, I believe, eight races, that's including us, where we will be fighting again. So in this game, I have definitely uh, learned a lot about optimizing and, and also about uh, using stats correctly. Okay, so tile switching, I'll try and keep as simple as possible for you guys. Uh, the first step to a tile switching is knowing which tile you need to switch. So for example, if we look here, we have, uh, actually I'll keep it even simpler. See it has 13 written here, and this tile, which we've highlighted, is a unique tile in this scene. I've made sure because I've tested it. Um, and by unique, it just means that there, if you look at this tile, the artwork um, is not repeated or this tile is not repeated anywhere else in this scene. So now I have a tile here, 
and I now need to have something to replace it with. So if I make a new scene here, I'll show you that I've made a scene called position switching. Um, and if you have a look here, okay, so there's two things we need to know right now that I have highlighted this tile up here. And now down here, it's displaying exactly the scene position. And it says X zero, Y zero. And that means that this is tile zero in this scene. And if we move along, uh, you'll see that that, that number down here uh, goes up one, two, three, four, uh, all the way up here till 20, because I've made this scene uh, as wide as a Game Boy screen, which is 20 tiles. So if we go down onto this next tile, it says uh, X zero, Y one. And in the terms of the scene, this is, this is actually tile number 20, okay? So we've gone along and done zero to 19, and then this one is tile 20. Uh, so if I was to uh, call upon this scene and say, I need one of your tiles, I would be able to, I would know that tile zero displays as this big fat zero, and tile 10 uh, displays as a big fat 10, right? And then if I want these, I'll have to do extra work. But for now, we'll keep it simple. These right here from zero to 10 will display as zero to 10 if I'm calling on them from a different scene. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. This scene is called position switching. So if I uh, click on this scene here, so I'm now gonna be working inside this blue event group that I've just created, okay? And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be writing a GBVM script. And GBM you can find by typing in GBVM here. And as you can see below this, I've actually already got a little um, thing that I'm using to display the, the timer counter at the very bottom. So I'll obviously use that as reference when writing this. But basically, we're going to be typing in vm underscore replace underscore tile underscore xy. And that is the first part of this script that we're writing in order to replace this 13 with our correct uh, value, okay? And our correct value will be obviously the, the position that we're in as a player. And for example, instead of, a, you know, the racing position, it could be your health, it could be your ammo count, it could be anything that you need in your game. However, this is this works perfectly for static scenes like I have in my game, uh, or menus like I've been showing. So we, if we now continue, we've got the VM replace tile XY. So we're saying uh, we want to replace a tile uh, at an XY coordinate. And obviously we're doing this in our scene, which has the 13 that we want to replace with the actual thing. So we're going to do a comma, and we're going to now add a reference. So you should have made a, a scene like I did up here, where it has all the numbers you want or the, the icons you want displayed in order to pull that information into a different scene, okay? So we're going to be adding a reference down here. We're going to go in the background. And if you can find it, great. Otherwise, you can type it in. I know it's called position switching. And now I have it here, and it has three options. So basically what this does is helps you know what to type in. Or actually, if you click on it, click on this top one that's called tile set it says copied to clipboard and now if I paste it down with uh, control V it now has bank background the name of the scene tile set all separated by underscores so we now know we're referencing the artwork uh, that the scene has okay uh, we're using the image called position switching here if you look at the other thing as well we also needed to remember to add the XY coordinates. So you see it ends in XY, so we need to start it with XY. And the XY coordinates are, if we hover over it, 2, 1. If I look, move my cursor around, you can see the XY at the very bottom of the screen is changing. The top, the very top left is 0, 0, and right here is 2, 1. So we need to write 2, comma, 1, comma. And then that gives us the exact XY coordinates that we're going to be replacing uh, with the background image okay and now we need to tell it which tile do we want to take from this scene so instead of giving it an xy coordinate as you might think we're actually going to be like i said using the count so from 0 to 10 would be here and 0 to 20 would be all the way over here 21 would be here you just need to not have any repeating tiles uh, in the main information that you're gr you're grabbing okay if you add um, for example, if I were to have two blank ones here, it would act as one. So this would be 10, then it would be a blank one, and that would be 11. Another blank one would still 
uh, technically be 11, and then 12 would be in the space of 13. If you look at the bottom left of the screen, it says 13. Um, so adding blank or repeating tiles takes away from this count. So you need to make sure your tiles are unique uh, if you're going to be referencing them like we are. So we've got one, we've got zero to 10, and that's all we need to know because uh, we only have eight races in our game. And you might want a scene that has, for example, zero to 99. And I also have a scene that has 99 um, numbers here. So if you're having a scene that has zero to 99, that means you can have a variable that has 99 in it, and you'll be able to pull all the way from this scene, uh, there's 99, right? So that's what I've been doing with the the scenes that display numbers. So if you remember, uh, the scenes here have you know, all the way from zero, zero to nine, nine. And that just means that we have the possibility of having stats that, are, that do go up to 99 without having sprites that with 99 frames. It keeps it much simpler. We just have a scene like this that we're pulling the information from when we need. So again, back to this uh, script. If you look down here, the way I finish it is by adding a variable. And my variable that I already know um, is var underscore uh, current position. And that will do the job for me uh, only because I've set up this, this variable already to have the current position uh, calculated. But for example, if you need uh, just to, on a one-off chance to have, for example, the number uh, one displayed there, for example, you would have to, I believe we, I believe it needs a global variable, okay? So if I go into choose a variable here and I uh, just have variable one, I will have to rename it so it doesn't have a space in it. So if I just take out the space and add variable one there, um, we can now put that before the script. And instead of using variable current position, we want var underscore that we need to exactly call this name, okay? Uh, variable one. But you need to remember that we're setting it to a value and obviously true and false is technically zero and one but we if we want it to have we want to be sure that we're setting this value to one then so that this tile right here will display as a one when this scene runs um, and this should work perfectly if you've read the gb studio central article you may have seen that it's using things like argo.0 or something like that and i haven't been able to um, make that work for me specifically. I've only been able to make it work with these um, examples here. You may sometimes find that the it doesn't let you build because it says that it's not uh, referenced. This isn't this variable isn't referenced anywhere prior to this happening. Um, and I often find that by setting a value for that variable in the opening scene, it will let you do it. But I've also found that um, by going in the build and run and ticking enable. Uh, this emeculous C debugging, um, you will also be able to get past those warnings and errors. So obviously some things like this require a bit more testing and a bit more trial and error than you might hope. But um, think about this coding is like hacking. We're literally ripping the screen. We're ripping the, this tile from the screen and replacing it with a tile from a different scene. It's going to be a bit of work for the, for the console and for the coding, right? So if you have too much of this going on, or if you have it um, during runtime, you will see that um, like each tile is done one by one as it goes down the list of, you know, scripts to execute. Um, so I have all of this happening before it fades in. So if you see, I've actually disabled the automatic fade in, I do the tile switching, and then I fade the screen in, in order for it not to be visually um, unappealing, where it's all filling out the um, these random um, uh, unique tiles, right? If I didn't do that, then it would fade in and then the script would do and it would fill up with the information. And it might be cool, actually. That might be a, a cool effect you might want in your game, but you need to be aware of it and why it happens. And here again, look, here's the, the mess I said about the car. Um, by writing zero to 46 here, um, I'm creating definite unique tiles, okay? If I was to, you know, just randomly scribble, it might not actually be unique, but by writing the numbers, you know that it's unique. And if you didn't already know, if the tiles aren't unique, it will replace all of those tiles in the scene. So for example, if I was to replace this uh, dotted um, bar, or like just, just this tile here of this, 
this bar. If I replace this one tile, it will replace all the tiles that are exactly the same in the scene. So uh, it may just be this line, but for example, if I was to uh, replace this tile, it would replace all of the ones across here, 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 all the way along the bottom. Uh, and that might not be what we want, right? You may want to just have a part of your scene um, change. Not every tile that's like that. You only wanted that specific tile in that specific place. So if that's a problem you're having, consider trying to make your tiles unique. Um, but if you do that, you also may need to set the correct display at the beginning of the scene um, so that it's not, you know, a jumbled mess. Okay, so I really hope that was useful. I, am, I understand that um, tile switching can be very difficult uh, if you've never done any of that coding before and like setting and making sure everything is ready before you start can be annoying as well. Like having that scene ready, having the variables already set up. Um, it can be quite overwhelming, but if you break it down into the fact that you want this specific tile to look like a different tile from a different scene and that uh, different scene has uh, numbers from zero to whatever, uh, as long as you're using a variable that has that exact value, it will switch it with that. Um, and by adding that reference and uh, finding the scene you want and, and clicking that tile set and copying it into your clipboard and then just pasting it, it makes every it just makes life a lot easier. Um, I really hope this helped and uh, if you're interested in playing Ticket Racing free, it's not done yet. There are a few things that need doing so stick around. It will be available for my patrons first and I'll put my patrons up on screen right now. Thank you so much to you guys. You guys are absolute best. Uh, remember to like the video if you like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know if you've tried tile switching before, if you thought it was too difficult or if you've figured it out now. How long did it take you? It took me quite a while but now I've got it. I'm using it almost all the time. It's so incredibly useful. And if you don't know how to do it, definitely try it out. Um, I was a bit skeptical at first, um, but then, you know, getting grips with it, it opens up a whole new can of worms with GB Studio. Uh, the sprites are quite limiting. And let me know what you thought of Take It Racing Free. Obviously it's not done yet, but um, the bones are there. The foundation's good. Uh, it might not make sense to a lot of people. I know that um, I'm making very menu heavy games at the moment. However, I hope that all of the information that I have is like making this rich experience. So yeah, thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.